Hi guys, this is NJ. Um, I'm recording second workshop for those who are interested in learning C Sharp Grasshopper at the same time. Um, I feel like before we actually start, I think we need to understand um, the ecosystem and how the liner works. I don't know, I might be wrong, but I feel like this is my understanding of the Rhino, basically. So from my teaching experience, in the first place, I was asking my students to follow this direction. The direction is more about like looking at the full down menu because the full down menu is actually give us a sense of the program. I mean, how the program is construct, things like that. As you know, most of the modern software, they have always like has you know, file menu and edit menu and help menu and panel menu. Panel is more about like, you know, rearrange the panel, like command the panel and properties and toolbar, things like that. Um, you know, the file is usually open, you know, save as so that we are able to convert the Rhino file to other files so that we are able to save the um, NOPS modeling file to mesh, like through this or OBJ file. And also added, you know, copy, paste, which is really important, yeah. And also we have join and explore, which is particularly for the grasshopper commands. And also we we have a also we have a view which is basically rearrange of our viewport like zoom in out. And also we are able to change the render type of the viewport here. So this kind of stuff. And most importantly, um, we need to create our mental skeleton or mental structure of the geometry. So basically, my understanding of a Rhino is to construct NOPS surface. That's it. So NOPS surface is sort of a mathematic you know, interpretation based on the degree system. The Rhino engine very powerful and you know strong in terms of build knobs surface and also we need to understand the knobs curve in order to build the knobs surface so there's a lot of um, you know um, comments and according to the line of common um, there's a curve family right curve family includes line polyline and rectangle which is like in you know, a primitive shapes such as circle arc things like that and also we have um, command to create a knobs curve that we will visit later. In case that we have curve, which is a reference for building surface. So there are lots of commands to build surface out of curves right here. And the surface is, uh, the most of the surface in Rhino, we can actually consider it as a just a rectangle, which has four edges or four control points or four corners, okay? So even if there are several ways of constructing the surface, there is actually rectangle-like surface, just like a panel, you know, which has four corners. So when individual surfaces connect to each other and join them, we call it like poly surface, or sometimes if the shape is like closed shape, we call it solid. Sometimes we can call like, I don't know, they don't, there are different types of name according to the documentation, I, I guess. Like poly surface or closed surface, closed B-wrap or B-wrap extrusion and things like that. So think about box, you know, box, it has multiple surfaces, right? Let's say six surfaces, so we can put them as a box, right? So meaning that we can actually decompose box as a surface. And also we can decompose the surface to the curve, right? And also we can comp decompose curve as a points. It makes sense, right? So these are the three co commands menu is really important to understand how the line works. And the mesh, we have a mesh, right? So mesh is, uh, let's say, I don't know, the without mesh menu, actually we couldn't convert surface to the mesh, which is the universal format to, to other CAD systems such as SketchUp, um, Rabbit, and 3 Max, and other 3D software. So basically, my understanding of the mesh is all about like vertices, which is better in a space. 
and connectivity. So actually, we can consider mesh as a substitution of the surface because they have similar information but different interpolation in a surface. So we will take a look at it in detail later. And we have a dimension, yeah, you know, just some of like annotation of the shapes. And we have a transform. Obviously, you know, we in case that we have curve, point, surface, and solid, we wanted to you know, translate or we want to transform such as the rotating, um, copy, paste, bend, twist, and things like that. So this is more about like deforming the existing shapes. So we have a tool which is, I think, nothing special. It's more about like open the Rhino script, Python script, or Grasshopper, or some option panel uh, where we can, you know, the modify the Rhino configuration. And the analysis, I think the analysis is quite important because um, what I'm saying is once we build curve and surface and solid, there is individual entity, they have their own particular analyzing um, functions that we possibly decompose the shapes, like uh, going down or going up, such as like, you know, extract point from surface or extract the list of a point from the curve, things like that. So analysis is important, and renderer, I mean, the, even if the Rhino is specialized in modeling, particularly for NOPS modeling, it's the, the render is really important. Basically, when you, you know, build your own three-dimensional three geometry in Rhino scene, uh, we need to render, convert these vector shapes to the bitmap so that we can you know, apply some visual effect and editing in Photoshop. You know, to create the, your own panel or print it as an image. Yeah. So there are really powerful render plugin that you directly execute the render in Rhino environment, such as V-Day. So anyhow, the Rhino has a concept of the rendering. Yeah, these are pretty much about understanding in a fill down menu. Actually, there could be more, but I felt like this kind of instruction, again, it gives us some mental structure of the how Rhino consists of, right? Now I'm going to talk about the toolbar on the left side on your screen here. So this menu is really interesting to me because it has a pattern, yeah? So let me review the pattern with you guys. So first of all, we have points here. Okay, just press and then you can click the edge and then we can pin it. Um, this is the curve, let's say line, uh, the lines. And this is the curve. This is the circle. This is the ellipse and arc, and rectangle and angle shape. Oh, go. I'm sorry. Uh, angle in shape and curve tool, right? I'm keep open. This is surface and this is surface tool and solid and solid tool. Yeah, I think this is enough. Yeah, so do you guys can see pattern? Yeah, so we have a line curve, circle, ellipse, rectangle, arc, polygon. These are curve family, basically. I mean, the, according to the Rhino document or uh, Rhino common API, so even if the line and polyline, actually they are belongs to curve family. So let's say curve family has this kind of uh, children, okay? And, you know, we have a curve, which is 1D, and then curve tool. Right, we have a surface, which is 2D, and surface tool. Uh, we have a solid, which is basically consists of set of the surfaces, and we have a solid tool. So what I mean by that is, you know, once we draw your own line, we can modify by curve tools. Okay, we have a surface. Obviously, we have a surface tool to modify the surface. Right, we have a solid, and we have a solid tool 
to modify the solid. This is sort of like a pattern, okay? Not only that, the data can be exchanged between levels, okay? So for example, let me start the, from point. So this is the point, right? Point has set of information called X, Y, Z in a space so that we can actually put it in a space, you know? And you know what? The point is a fundamental ingredient to create the curve, right? And also the surface is needs curves to be built, okay? And also surface become solid. They are like interlocking each other, okay? Let me talk about the point a little bit more. So we have a point, right? So what if I draw point, a lot of points in between two points, right? We can define the line. It makes sense, right? But however, we do not need to remember these points in between two points, right? Simply, we need to, to start and end point to define a line, just like this, right? How can I define polyline, right? I can give you multiple positions like this. Yeah, this is the polyline, yeah. And how can I draw the control point curve, which is Nuff's curve, same as polyline. So I'm going to trace this polyline that we draw before. Yeah, right click. So basically, you know, they are same curve. Right? As I said, every 1D curve belongs to curve family, okay? So, but the difference between two curves is a degree. The so degree is a sort of, um, let's say, um, parameter the NUPS engine in Lino can interpolate the and then visualizing in screen, yeah? So here, uh, I'm going to type in like rebuild, uh, rebuild here, and then going to select this polyline then right click and I'm gonna fix uh, six point here and then I'm going to change the degree from one to three if I press OK and it become like you know curve right and then I'm going to select this curve and then I'm going to type rebuild and same as before just convert degree three to number one and it becomes like polyline. They're like interchangeable, but the only difference is they have different degree system that can be interpolated by NUPS engine in Rhino. This concept is actually expanded to the surface. So the only difference is like, is it one dimension or two dimension? When I say in one dimension, the curve has their own value called the T value, okay? Let me open the Photoshop. So think about we have a line here, right? So we have the starting point and the end point. In case they really parameterize this line, it always goes to zero, with T value, and then number one. Yeah. What about this midpoint? Probably 0 0.5, right? So it doesn't matter how they you know, translate, how they transform in a three-dimensional space, just like curve. They have no idea. They only know the T value, like a one-dimensional value, okay? Let's come back to Rhino here. I'm going to draw two line segments. Like this, and like this. Again, in order to create a surface, we need a curve. Otherwise, there is no way to build a surface, okay? This is sort of like an ecosystem or hierarchy of Rhino. So I'm going to select a loft, select two lines in order, the quick right button and just follow the default options. Now we have the surface, yeah? Again, the line is surface modeling tool, so understanding the surface is really, really important than any other sh things like solid or mesh, okay? So again, um, the degree of this surface is just one and one, so that's why we are able to see this quad-like, you know, surface. I'm going to rebuild, um, let's say five, five all along the U direction and V direction because this is 2D dimension shape, unlike the line. The line is one dimensional shape, yeah. And then I'm going to stick to like three, three and okay. 
So if you select and press F10, we can see the control point, right? So I'm going to um, distort the control point like this, like this. So I'm going to render it. Yeah. <coughs> This is the nicely curved surface, yeah? But again, the surface has no idea how they deform the in three-dimensional space, yeah? They only know U and V coordinate system because they live in that space, okay? Let me draw something in Photoshop. So again, we have like this rectangle. It's always rectangle, which has four edges or four corners. This is the U direction. This is the V direction. So let's say this point, we can call it by 0, 0.0, right? This is the 1 by 0. This is the 1 by 1. This is the 0 by 1. Uh, in case that this surface was reparameterized. So what is this point? Yeah, the same question as the line, yeah? So 0 0.5 by 0 0.5, yeah? So within this coordinate system, we can access and then extract the data and then apply the data. This is all about the surface that you need to remember. Let's come back to Rhino here. It doesn't matter how they deformed in the space again. And also we can think about like, oh, this is looks like surface. However, it has a, a lot of a lot of lines along the same direction. So meaning that we can actually extract the curve out of this surface. Yeah? So once we have a curve, also we can decompose the curve as a set of points. Makes sense, right? But um, some of my students actually ask me like, you know, NJ, what, is, what about this surface? Yeah? What about this surface? I cannot see any four points on this surface. Yeah, it makes sense. However, if you select it and by pressing F10, you can see the control point, which is actual the quad surface, right? We call this is trimmed surface. So what I mean by that is they have their own like, you know, the panel, and then we can actually trim the surface by the circle. And then out of this circle, this surface actually invisible on a screen. However, again, the surface live in the two-dimensional space. So in case that you apply any scraping on this surface, they have no idea it's, just, it's like a circle-like surface. They have no idea, actually. They just try to deal with this, this quad surface, okay? Now keep in mind. So let me apply like on trim and to select the edge here. And then it actually reveals their own actual face, yeah? And then the other question is like this. So we have a solid here, right? For in case that I draw the solid, which is looks like solid, but in, in case that if you click it, you can see the closed surface, which is surface basically. This is a surface. And this is a surface as well. So meaning that we can unfold or unroll this sphere as a panel. That's true. So if you click this surface and go to property panel here and just unclick the show surface eyes curve, then you can see just one line, which is a thin, yeah? Let me open the Photoshop. We have a spear with thin. Basically the thin is the place where two edge meet. Just, just think about you have a paper, just like a letter size paper, right? You can fold it, make it like spherical shapes, right? So basically, this corner can go to this direction, right? We can consider as the same position. And 1.1, we can also go to this tip of the spear. So now we know this edge is goes to this seam, right? And this top and bottom edge become like singularity of the 
bottom and top of the spear. Right? So what if I draw a line from 0 and 0 along that direction up to one, one, 1 and 1 along the U and V axis? Yeah? The line should be starting from here and goes to that direction and evolve all the way back side and then appear on the uh, front side and goes to that singularity. You know what I mean? Like this like a hidden line. This is the straight line. Yeah. Just think about the all knob surface is just rectangle. Okay. This they just um, distort in three dimensional space. This is a really important concept in Rhino, I think. Let's come back to the Rhino here. I have been used the Rhino since version two. Actually, I cannot remember the version four or version five. Up to the version, if you apply smooth command on the surface, actually we can see like a small opening top and bottom of the surface. While I'm creating Korean version of this video, I realize this, you know, this smooth um, command in Rhino version 6 is quite improved than before. So if you click it, oh, actually I need to turn on this um, ISO curve. Okay. And smooth. And if I increase the step, it become like you know squeeze, and I couldn't see any opening on this singularity and down there, but actually it 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 was opened. Believe me, yeah, I tested it by the way. Now we know even if the sphere belongs to solid, which is actually surface, right? And then we can create the um, box here. The box is very easy, right? The box consists of multiple panels, let's say quad-like panel. So we can decompose it. So click it and explode it so that we can decompose the box as individual singular surface. Also, we can join them, like I'm select three of them and join here. And if we click it, you can see open polysurface, which is different types of name of solid. I mean, there's different types of name. I don't know why, but solid, closed, extrusion, polysurface. Actually, we call them as a BRAP in Rhino Common. We will take a look at it in detail later. But I'm trying to give a sense, like an overview, rather than looking at the small tree, but looking at the, you know, the big picture of the forest, which is called Rhino. I think this kind of a concept is important because computational designer they basically dealing with the data out of geometry from the surface, solid, and curve, and point. Because the individual um, level of geometry, they have their own particular analysis tool to extract some particular data that we can convert from different level to levels. So this kind of ecosystem and hierarchy is help us to develop our own design strategy, you know, how we design our CSR component, how we design the line of glass of a component, things like that. So I saw several people who just remember individual component, but I mean, after several weeks and several months, they forgot what kind of component they use. However, in case that you have fundamental understanding how data exchange all the way down, you know, from point to the solid. And then you know how to decompose and then rebuild the necessary information to the shape. I think um, this kind of ecosystem and understanding is quite important. So now um, I really wanted to bring this kind of topic to the Grasshopper environment. Let me open Grasshopper. Grasshopper is a plugin. I feel like the Grasshopper is an inbuilt plugin in Rhino 6, I, I think. So anyhow, so Rhino Grasshopper has their own full down menu, which is really simple. Just file, just like this file. We can save the definition file. Um, also, we can add like copy paste and group, things like that. And view, which is about, you know, how we, you know, dealing with the component in the canvas, I think. And the display is more about like how we visualizing the result from Grasshopper on the Rhino screen, I think. And solution is more about like, uh, you know, 
controlling the computation. Sometimes we can disable the server, which is in case that you have a very computationally heavy, or sometimes it breaks your definition. You can turn off and then open the file. Um, the help is help. Yeah, there's a lot of like tutorial and crossover support community. I think um, you know this has become your friend, I think. And now we are able to reach actual really important, you know, the full down menu here. Um, just forget about this letter. This is the plugin. So I feel like the from the parameter to display, these are common full down menu of Grasshopper. Okay. Let me expand a little bit. Um, the parameters, um, as you know, I'm trying to decompose the menu to create the, your own mental structure of Grasshopper and Lino. Okay. Just I think this is the most important uh, lesson in this video. So anyhow, we have geometry in a parameter panel, right? So as you can see, this geometry is all about the geometry that Grasshopper offer to you. Okay. One thing I can say, um, we have geometry, right? Again, the Rhino has their own like hierarchy. The geometry is a sort of um, very top hierarchy against the other shapes, other entity, according to the Rhino common. So below the geometry, also we have a BRAP as a sort of children of geometry. And BRAP is a sort of substitution of solid object that we saw in the Rhino environment, okay? And we know curve is a, a family that can contain curve, line, polyline, rectangle, any other 1D shapes, okay? And surface is surface. So in this case, uh, what I'm trying to say is the geometry is top level. As your children, it has a BRAP, surface, and curve. This is like the important stuff. Obviously, the point is there. And let's move to primitive here. Um, in the primitive panel, uh, we have like boolean, integer, and number, and domain, and things like that, which is very important material to cook grasshopper component or C sharp. If you guys are familiar with the scripting, you guys used to use like integer, float number, double number, boolean, and things like that. So these are substitution of this kind of parameters, okay? And input, I feel like the input is, um, you know, grasshopper specific um, things like panel for debugging purpose, or, and also we have numbered slide and boolean toggle, some button and color. Even you can import the Rhino model and some data like CSV or JSON file. So these are like, a, um, it's nothing special, you know, just input stuff. And lastly, we have utility, uh, like a visualizing some data structure and data record and some optimization tool and things like that. It's nothing special, I think. Um, the most important thing is that parameter is sort of uh, input stuff that we need to have to create our, our own algorithm or design definition, okay? Uh, let's jump to math. Math is just math, and <laughs> you know we have a domain to define uh, minimum and maximum. Sometimes we need to construct one-dimensional domain or two-dimensional domain for surface. So we will take a look at it later. And we have an operation, you know, and also we have a script. You know, Shisha component is here, and sine, cosine, some math function is here. This is just about a math, and we have a set. So set is more about, set is looks like list or array concept. So again, we dealing with the data. So in order to deal with the data, we need to understand the data structure, in this case list. And then also the grasshopper offer us concept of tree data structure. But actually I don't like the tree, but you know, tree we can consider it as a list of list. The list is just like, um, we will take a look at it later, but let's say list is the set of a number in order, okay? We can actually access, we can access the data by index. So this is about the data structure, and then we can jump to vector, okay? 
So now we are reached something like geometry here. So as you can see, the vector is uh, similar as point here, right? And curve here, and surface here, and mesh. Uh, and mesh is there actually. Don't worry about it. So again, I'm trying to make you have mental structure of this component, okay? So vector. We have a vector and point. Actually, point is sort of a different representation of a vector. They are like interchangeable each other, I think. And we have like a grid system to construct multiple point in a rule. And also we can consider vector as a plane in Grasshopper. So actually plane is the set of vectors indicating x-axis and y-axis and origin axis and the z-axis. Sometimes we can call it normal vector. We can visit later. So again, this is more about like point here, okay? And curve. As I said, we have a curve family like line, curve, circle, ellipse, rectangle, and curve tool here. Same as this concept, we have primitive, like a line, circle, arc, and spline, which is snuff's curve with different level of degree, and utility. Yeah? So utility is basically the composed surface, and analysis is also act as the curve tool. So if you guys are interested in, you can actually make a one-to-one -one match between curve tool and analysis and tool, utility tool. So make them group, okay? And let's go to jump to surface. So we have a free form and primitive. This is the how we construct a surface on the basis of curves. And we have an analysis here and utility, which is the same as like this configuration. Creation, modification, okay? Here, creation to modification, okay? And mesh. Mesh is just like, um, how can I say, um, different representation of surface. Let's say surface has the U and V concept with the degree so that Rhino NG can interpolate the curvature in a space. But mesh has a uh, vertices, right? And connectivity, that's it. There's no like curvature, there's no like additional computation to drive the curvature in a space. They just connect each other. So we will visit later. But I think the understanding mesh is quite important because for those who are interested in like polygon tools such as Maya, Maya is actually polygon tool, and 3ds Max and SketchUp, also interested in developing some tool using OpenGL and WebGL, which is low-level API graphics. In this case, we need to understand how we construct and decompose mesh. But in addition to this, in order to export snub surface or solid, we need to convert this snub concept to the mesh concept. Um, we will take a look at it later. Um, this is intersect, which is more about like analyzing the situation. Like, is it really overlapping between VRAP and line and surface and line and things like that? And also we have some of our like Boolean operation for the VRAP, let's say solid here, like union, difference, and intersect. We have a similar concept here. And transform, you know, we have transform here, right? So transform is more about like transforming and distort given shape, right? Meaning that we need to create something. Basically, the transform is consume their geometry and then do their jobs, okay? So we have like affine, array, and morph, and Euclidean uh, operation here. The last one is the display. Display, so I think this is more about like a debugging purpose where we can actually render it. Um, you know, we have like a vector visualization and we have bar graph, which I frequently use, um, quick graph, because we are dealing with the data. So we need to visualize the data to understand the data, okay? So we have a annotation tool here and preview here. 
Yeah. So these are pretty much about the skeleton of the grasshopper, which is very similar to the rhino itself. I think it makes sense because you know the grasshopper component is basically. Uh, I have no idea about the internal structure, but uh, you know according to the rhino common that we're gonna use in C# -sharp component. They just sort of a, like an API to wrapping up the Rhino core, you know, engine. So I think um, they should be identical each other, not each other, just follow to Rhino environment. So yeah, that's it. I think uh, just take a look at this video. Uh, if you couldn't understand, just repeat it. Um, I feel like this kind of foundations give us sort of a map, you know for our journey. So I think I'm done. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe it and see you guys later. Bye.